Welcome to daily editorial analysis of Shankarai's Academy. Today's date is 17 September 2024. Today's topic of discussion is we have taken two different editorials from newspaper The Hindu and The Indian Express. We are going to have a holistic approach for both these editorials from the mains perspective. Look at this editorial from The Indian Express newspaper. So, this editorial highlights about the challenges in the Surrogacy Act of India. So, to regulate the surrogacy in India, we have two acts, namely the Surrogacy Regulation Act and the Assisted Reproductive Technology Regulation Act. So, these are the two acts which are regulating the surrogacy in India. So, both these acts are prohibiting the commercial surrogacy as well as they are banning the compensation which are given to the surrogate mothers. So, both these provisions are debated in this editorial detaily. So, let us start with the main question first. Evaluate the key provisions of the Surrogacy Regulation Act 2021 and discuss the challenges in its implementation. How can the regulatory framework be enhanced to address these challenges and ensure ethical and equitable surrogacy practice in India? So, we can divide this question into three parts. First, we have to write the provisions of this act. Next, we have to identify what are the challenges in this act. Thirdly, we have to end with way forward to address these challenges. So, now let us get into discussion. So, the rights protecting the surrogates are first article 14. So, article 14 ensures that there is an equality of law and equal protection of law for all including the surrogate mothers. So, next we have the article 15. So, this says that there is a prohibition of discrimination on grounds of race, religion, caste, sex and place of birth. So, this non-discriminatory practices applies also to the surrogacy arrangements. Thirdly, we have the article 21 which guarantees right to life and personal liberty. So, this article also applies to the surrogate mothers. So, these are the three important articles with respect to ensuring the rights of surrogate. First, article 14, article 15 and the article 21. So, India was a major market for surrogacy before the year 2021. After that, the Parliamentary Standing Committee highlighted the fact that there is a need for the regulation of the surrogacy in India because there were exploitation of women rights with respect to surrogacy arrangement. So, based on the recommendation of the Parliamentary Standing Committee, the two acts namely the Surrogacy Act Regulation Act and the Assisted Reproductive Technology Act of 2021 are implemented. So, now we will see what are the questions with respect to the act one by one. First is the legal challenges in the surrogacy law. So, both these act are restricting the commercial surrogacy. Commercial surrogacy is nothing but the surrogacy is done in exchange of mat monetary benefit to the surrogate. So, this monetary benefit to surrogate is banned in case of this surrogacy law. So, the first challenge is the legal challenges with respect to the banning of commercial surrogacy. Next, we have the transition from the commercial surrogacy to the altruistic surrogacy. So, commercial surrogacy as already seen, it is the surrogacy which is done with the exchange of monetary benefit to the surrogate mother. So, in altruistic surrogacy, no such monetary benefit is given to the surrogate. So, in this case, it can lead to exploitation of the surrogate mothers and the fairness, equity and rights of the surrogate are in big question. So, also in this law, there is no clear provision for the compensation for the surrogate mothers. This is the second question revolving around the surrogacy act. Thirdly, we have the issues regarding the compensation and the payment. This act bans the compensation to the surrogate mothers as already said. So, this can lead to unfair treatment of surrogate and potential exploitation of women because of this. Now, we will see what are the challenges with respect to the surrogacy in India and the surrogacy act. So, this act is banning the commercial surrogacy. This will limit the economic autonomy of surrogate mothers. For example, some may depend on the economic benefit which they are getting from this arrangement. At the same time, they are getting the money. This can even push them to doing unethical practices such as 
commodification of the motherhood. Next is the both this surrogacy, the commercial and the altruistic surrogacy can pose exploitation risks. So, this may not provide legal as well as medical safeguards to the surrogate mothers. Next, talking about the legal and ethical dilemmas, suppose we are giving a compensation to the surrogate mothers, this may lead to the commodification of motherhood. On the other hand, if you are not giving the compensation, this may violate the reproductive rights of the women. So, this is a debate we are talking about in this editorial. Next, there is an ethical and legal complexity. If the commercial surrogacy is banned, it may limit the women's economic autonomy and the rights. On the other hand, it is also rising an ethical dilemma because we are treating surrogates as a mere instrument of the reproduction. Now, let us see what are the pros as well as cons of this surrogacy regulation act of 2021 first is the it will prevent the exploitation of women because if you are getting a financial gain out of the surrogacy they may be exploited for the monetary benefit if this giving the monetary benefit for the surrogacy is prohibited no such exploitation will be done next is the it will protect the rights of the child let's say if a girl child is trafficked or sold just for the purpose of surrogacy. So, this is violating the rights of the children. In banning the commercial surrogacy, it is leading to the protection of the rights of the child. It is also promoting the ethical practices because we have a strict regulation on the banning of commercial surrogacy and giving a monetary benefit in exchange of the surrogacy. The cons with respect to this surrogacy regulation act is, it is limiting the financial independence. So, who are in need of the financial can go to underground practice of the surrogacy. So, they will not have a safe and sound surrogacy practices and it may also lead to mistreatment of the surrogate mothers. So, we need a clear framework to ensure the rights of the surrogate mother. Talking about the way forward, we need a compensationary framework which is not there in the current Surrogacy Regulation Act. So, if a fair compensation is given to the surrogates both in case of physical, mental and the medical aspects, this will support the surrogate mothers. Next is, there is also a requirement of strong regulation to enhance the oversight of the surrogatory arrangement and it will also prevent the exploitation of women for the surrogacy practice. Third is, we require the awareness for the rights of surrogate mother which will promote the ethical practice of surrogacy. We can also learn from international best practices and adopt in Indian system. So, in this video, we saw about the provisions of the surrogacy act, what are the challenges in the act and the debates revolving around it. We also saw what are the way forward to deal with this situation. With this, we will discuss the next editorial. To so, look at this editorial from the newspaper, The Hindu. So, this editorial highlights about the rights of future generation, especially in the context of climate change, environmental degradation and the economic inequalities. What is the right of the future generation in all this crisis period? So, with this backdrop, let us see a main question first. The question is, discuss its implication for the sustainable development and how it highlights the challenges of the economic overconceptions. Also, suggest measures that can be adopted to push the date back and ensure resource security for the future generation. So, here we will see what are the implications of the sustainable development. It is the first part we have to address. Next, we will see what are the challenges because of the overconsumption in the environment. Third, we will see what are the measures which need to be taken to address these challenges. So, with this, let us start the discussion. First, talking about the rights of future generation. So, the future generation has the right to live in the safe, healthy and a secure world. So, this editorial says that the future generation has this right to live in a safe, healthy and a secure world has to be the main focus in all the upcoming climate change debates and the summit. This is the first fact which is highlighted in the editorial. Next, we have an universal or an international principle called as the Maastricht principle. So, this principle is saying that the decision which are which we are taking today has the impact on the future generation as well. So, this principle has to be in mind 
while taking any decision in any national or international forum. Thirdly, we have the overconsumption can risk the future generation because it is living a depleted and a degraded planet for them. So, that is why they are going by the mastery principle which says the decision should be taken at the present time by considering the impact on the long term. With this, let us see about rights of future generation, especially in case of the climate debate. So, the UN is going to organize the summit in the year 2024, which is this year. So, this summit will be occurring in this month of 22nd to 23rd. The main focus of this summit is on global issues such as the climate change, pandemics and the inequality. The central theme of this summit is the right of future generation which is highlighted in this editorial. What is the importance of protecting the future generation? First of all, they have the right to live in a healthy environment. So, the current generation must ensure that the earth and the planet is not damaged irreparably. So, the rights of the future generation can be protected to achieve the climate justice. So, climate justice is nothing but the fair treatment of all people. So, the all people does not include only the people in the present generation, but it also includes people who are going to come in the future generation as well. So, we have a moral duty to protect the environment for the future generation. But is there any legal duty to do so? First, the Pakistan Supreme Court has upheld the climate justice which says it is the duty of a citizen to protect the environment for the future generation. Similarly, in Colombia, the constitutional court has upheld the environmental protection for the people in the future generation. Now, let us discuss about a concept called as overshoot day. So, overshoot day is nothing but it is a moment in a period where the human has used all the earth's capacity to regenerate the renewable resources as well as to absorb the waste. So, when the earth has lost this capability at a particular moment in this period, all the period next to that moment is called as the overshoot period and this moment is called as the overshoot day. So, after this overshoot day, we are living on an ecological credit. So, from that day, the resources gets depleted and the waste are started accumulating. The first overshoot day was observed on the year 1917 on the date December 30. Here you can say the overshoot day is almost at the end of the year. But recently the overshoot day is as early as August 2. This indicates that the resource is consumed early and it has outspaced the earth capacity to renew the renewable resources also to observe the waste from the earth. So, what are the causes of this overshoot? First is the overconsumption. So, the resources are consumed and overconsumed by the people of India to meet the high standards of living, especially in the case of developing countries. So, Added to that, population is also increasing in the world. So, the high population is also leading to the over-consuming of the resources in the environment. So, this has exceeded the earth's capacity to regenerate the renewable resources as well as to observe the emissions such as the carbon dioxide. Next is the waste generation. Due to overconsumption and the unsustainable practices, it is leading to high emission of carbon dioxide and waste product. So, this is also contributing to the overshoot concept. Thirdly, we have the environmental impact. Environmental degradation practices such as the deforestation, soil erosion and pollution is also causing overshoot which is also reducing the resilience of the ecosystem. So, what will be the consequence because of the overshoot? First, there is a depletion of resources, there is a degradation of environment and shortage of resources for the present as well as the future generation. So, we can deal with this overshoot by the use of renewable energy. So, we can replace the fossil fuel with renewable energy such as the solar energy. That is why government of India has started many initiatives such as the solar muft bijli yojana. Next, we are also going to conduct the sustainable agriculture practices. For example, we can say about the precision farming. So, about the precision farming, we have discussed in the newspaper analysis video, which is the part 1 video of today's video. 
you can check in the playlist of Shankar Ayes Academy. We can also reduce the waste by using concepts such as the 3R which is the reduce, reuse and recycle. By efficient use of resources also we can delay the overshoot and improve the climate resilience. So, in this editorial discussion, we saw what is the rights of future generation, what is the importance of it. We also saw about important concept and an interesting one known as the overshoot day and what are the causes, consequences and way forward to address all this issue. With this, we will conclude the discussion on this editorial. We have come to end of today's video. If you found the video informative, do hit like, give your feedback, says comment and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Have a nice day.